Hi everybody, I'm Sergio. I'm with Mobility Direct and welcome to our YouTube channel. Thanks for stopping by. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to replace the motors and the controllers on a Pride ZT model, particularly the ZT10. I have the rear base here and I do have the front half, the rest of the scooter here behind me, but I'm going to show you everything you need to know about replacing the two motors and the two controllers. The ZT models do have two motors, two controllers, and it allows you to do a donut. It takes very sharp turns, even though it's a four wheel model, kind of like a ZT lawnmower where you can kind of orbit in place. And that's the benefit of these scooters. Of course, with these extra features and extra components, the job gets a little bit harder when you have to do repairs. Uh, so keep that in mind. They're great products, but with more features, fancy electronics, gadgets and gazmos, you know, more things are prone to breaking. So this is something that we're gonna teach you how to do. Uh, follow along if you're a technician. This is intended for technicians. Don't try this at home. If you're not a technician, it could void your warranty, but follow along with me. And before I get started, uh, I wanna tell you about our free product catalog. If you want a copy, just go to our website, mobilitydirect.com. Click on the green button at the top of every page that says free catalog. Fill out that simple short form and you'll get one in the mail in about two weeks tops. I also want to tell you that we are doing a giveaway of a mobility scooter, sometimes a power wheelchair, once a month, like the last few winners that you're seeing on the screen now. You too could win a free mobility product. All you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment. If you subscribe and leave a comment, we might actually reply to your comment here in the near future and let you know that, hey, you won a free mobility product. Get in touch with us so that we can send you a free power chair or mobility scooter. That's one of the ways we like giving back to the community in exchange for your support and for you to follow along with our videos. We really appreciate that support. That's what makes this channel grow is that support from our audience. So thank you so much and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to take off the body panels. And I would like to tell you that if you wanna skip forward to any certain part of this video, there's gonna be chapters so that you can save time. You might not need to replace the motors. You may just wanna learn how to take off the body panel to replace the panel. So you will see chapters down low on the timeline so you can click and jump to certain sections. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get started here. I got my Phillips head uh, screwdriver. There are going to be two screws that I'm gonna start with right here and right here. Because the first thing we wanna do is take this body panel off so that way we can have access to the motors. All right, so those two are off and I am going to now work on getting the rest of the screws off so I can take the whole panel off. All right, so right here in the rear, there's two screws. We're gonna work on those next. All right, so when you're removing this body panel, you do need to be careful because there are some rear lights attached to this body panel and there are connectors that you're gonna need to detach. Now, you may not be able to see them here, so I'm gonna get close with the camera. All right, so if you can see back here, there are two connectors and they are basically attached to the back body panel here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out. There's a little piece that you need to push on and just pull and that should come right loose. All right, so we got the first one out. I'm gonna see if I can get a better angle here on the second one. So you just wanna push that little clip that I'm pushing with my thumb and pull. And there we go. So you can see the connectors now. Here's the male connector. There's the female connector. They're both labeled left light, right light. So that's the good thing about Pride Mobility. They really do a good job at labeling all their wires. By the way, folks, I apologize. I didn't show you how to take the scooter apart. That is something that you should be familiar with. So I'll throw it on the screen now. You can break down this scooter into about five pieces. 
um, including the batteries, you've got about five to six pieces. But when you take it apart, you will want to do it so that you can um, work on it and have this rear half detached from the front half. So the front half's right here and we already took it apart. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount my camera back up and move forward with uh, the next step we're gonna do is remove the tires. All right, so to remove the tires, you wanna get a flathead, pop the hubcap off, be gentle, it is plastic, don't wanna crack it. And then you're gonna need a socket set to remove that nut that's securing the tire to the axle. By the way, folks, I apologize if you hear chickens in the background. We have some spring chickens here in uh, the roost and we have some spring chickens here in the coop. They're in the garage. It's a little bit cold right now, so we've got the heat lamp for them. All right, folks, so for the nut on the axle, you'll want a 3 4 socket and you'll want to go ahead and loosen that up. We'll go ahead and fast forward through the process here. All right, so keep in mind, there's gonna be a washer there. So when you pull the tire out, and in this case, it looks like it's a little bit stuck. Sometimes that happens. So what I like to do when that happens is get a little rubber mallet. And of course, be gentle, but give it a little spin, tap upwards while rotating. All right, so there we go. And it looks like there's a little bit of corrosion. That's what was causing it to not slide out so easily. So keep in mind, there is a slot where the axle goes through and that little slot is where the key on the axle slides into and that's what locks the wheel in so that it can rotate so i'm going to put these wheels down to the side i'm going to keep the washer right there where it belongs so you don't lose it now this tire is coming out a little easier all right there we go all right so here we are now these keys can fall out, the keys that are on the axle, those little, um, it's like a little notch that fits into that groove that I showed you in the tire. So be careful that you don't lose those magnetic keys. Now, if you do notice that there is some corrosion on the axle, you know, and you're doing a typical maintenance job, you may want to scrub that down with a wire brush and some anti-corrosion or lubricant. That'll help make things perform a little bit better. All right, folks, so I do need to show you the next step here, and I'm not gonna really be able to show you while working because it's a really tight fit here. So there, the motors are here. Here's motor one, motor two. This is the left motor, this is the right motor. Um, we do sell these replacement parts. You just need to provide your serial number, and we can get you parts that are compatible with your model. So this um, thing that I'm pointing out, it's like a kind of like a holder that holds the, the motor and the automatic brake levers so it's kind of providing some supports to hold the weight of the motor a little bit while also attaching to the brake levers. So what you need to do, let me get some of these wires out of the way so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, you need to remove that bracket that attaches to the brake switch, the automatic brake switches or the freewheel lever, whatever you want to call it. See how it's moving? And it's, it's attached there to the brake lever switch. So really what you need to do to remove this motor is you want to basically, you could take the whole thing, but you're going to need to replace this anyway. So you could take the whole motor off and it's going to take everything with it. Uh, that might be the best step. Um, and then you can remove this a little bit with a little bit more room. Uh, so we'll go ahead and, and remove the motors one at a time. And to do so, you're going to have nut, bolt, some washers, so you have one, two, three on the top. So you have a, a single one on the top there that you need to remove from the frame, and then two at the bottom, one and two here, and then three up here. So each motor is gonna have three nuts and bolts securing it to the frame. So let's get started. All right, folks, so for the bolt and the nut, you're gonna need a half inch socket. So I've got two half inches 
On the back side here, I used a smaller deep socket, so you don't really have a lot of room there, and that should help. So I'm just loosening them both up right now, starting with the top one on the right motor. And we're just gonna continue on with the rest of them now. So I'm gonna flip it on over and get these two nuts and bolts. Now, because everything is so dirty and rusty here, I, I'm gonna go ahead and spray down the bolts and nuts with a little WD-40 so that my hardware doesn't get stuck in my sockets as I go. It's just gonna make things take longer. So go ahead and do that. Things should start to slide in and out a little bit easier. All right, so at this point, the motor is pretty much detached. However, I do wanna make sure that there's no cables coming from the motor that are zip tied to the frame, and there are. So I wanna make sure I get rid of those zip ties. So just get your uh, cutters. You're gonna see zip ties holding all these wires in place. You may wanna take a picture so that you can remember how the wires are fixed to the frame when you're putting everything back together. You're gonna wanna make sure that everything is zip tied back in the same fashion. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take a picture. And that's gonna allow me to put all the wires back the same way that it came from the factory. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these um, zip ties carefully. Don't cut your wires. All right, now all the wires are free. And at this point, we can go ahead and remove the motor. Now I do wanna point out something here. You could see that there are some kind of like dampeners on each side of the nut, or I'm sorry, the bolt head, and on the side of the frame here, there's a rubber washer with a cap. And that's what we took off on the first bolt. So you wanna make sure you put everything back the way it's, it's supposed to be. So I'm gonna tip this forward now, I just wanted to point that out. And the motor at this point should just slide right out. All right, so first motor's out, and we do have this main wire harness here that has the motors kind of attached. Well, it's actually just the electromagnetic brake clip that you need to worry about. So this main harness has the red and black wire coming from the brake system here. So we'll wanna go ahead and make sure that we detach that. And now the old motor is completely free. That's the old motor. That's the brake lever. And it looks like what just fell out was a little spacer washer here for the bolts to go through freely. And we'll make sure that on the new motor that that's there. So let's move on with the next motor and rinse and repeat. By the way, folks, I'd love to uh, hear from you. If you have a ZT10 or a ZT8, let us know what you think about it. If you've had to do this type of repair, I'd like to hear from you. Maybe you could tell me how you took care of replacing your motors. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe you have some tips or suggestions. Maybe you love it, maybe you hate it. If you have any questions, Keep in mind that we do reply to every single comment on all of our videos within one business day. So if there's something that we didn't cover in this video and you want to ask a question, technical question, any kind of question, leave it in the comment section. We will reply to you and we appreciate you watching. So I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this part and we'll reconnect and we'll restart the video once we have the second motor, the left motor removed. All right, left motor's removed. Just gonna detach the red and black connector from the main harness, and we are good to go. All right, so here we have our new motors from Pride Mobility. Do not use anything other than an OEM motor from the manufacturer, guys. All right, so there's a couple things that I've just realized here upon unbagging the new motors. 
hardware is not included, so don't lose your hardware, folks. Not only that, the brake levers are not attached to the motors, so you'll need to install the brake levers. Well, there are brake levers, I should say, but the, uh, the brackets that I was pointing out earlier that attach to the brake levers need to be installed. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, folks, so we have unwrapped the two new motors, and some of you may be wondering, well, how do you know which motor goes which? Well, there's really only one way that they're gonna mount properly onto the frame with the lever pointing up. So as long as the lever is kind of pointing upwards, you should be able to kind of tell where they go. Okay, so point the levers upwards, make sure that the three holes for the nuts and the bolts that you use to dismount the old motors line up and you'll quickly see which one goes where. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with reattaching the motors step-by-step. Step. Let's get started. All right, everyone, so let's go ahead and move forward here. What I'm gonna do now is remove the brake lever handle extension, whatever you want to call it, which is attached to the actual brake lever on the uh, magnetic brake assembly. And then we're going to remove this circular bracket that wraps around the whole motor assembly here that holds it on to the actual motor assembly. So let's go ahead and start by grabbing a hex key, grabbing a pair of pliers. There's going to be a little screw head here with the nut, two of them. We'll remove those first. Now I'm gonna try and do it here without blocking the camera, but forgive me, I don't have a camera, man. All right, so I removed the nuts and the screws. Don't wanna just slide out, so I'm actually having to screw them out in order for them to come out of the hole on the brake lever itself, which is not a problem, it's off. And unfortunately, there's no way to just slide this um, piece out that is wrapped around the actual motor itself. But there is a little screw, Phillips head screw coming through the bottom side right there and a countersunk nut right there. So I'm just going to loosen up one screw to see if I can actually remove it with just one screw detached to not have to go ahead and break apart the whole thing. and reinstall it afterwards. So I'm just loosening up this screw here. Hopefully you can see that. That screw right there. And once it's out, I think this thing is gonna be able to flex enough to where I could just completely slide it off. Let's see, I don't wanna break it, so if it's not gonna flex enough, I'm not gonna risk it. So it is, flexing just about enough for me to get it out comfortably without risking breaking it. There we go. So this is what I was talking about, folks. This piece right here wraps around the motor. Now I wanna go ahead and put this on the other motor now. So here we go. This is the uh, new motor. I'm gonna put the old motor off to the side for a second. And you can kind of just tell visually you know what's going on here you should be able to at least kind of determine where this all should go so you slide this on carefully not to make sure you don't break anything because this plastic piece is plastic and if you open it up too much to try and get it around your um, unit here it could break for sure so let's make sure not to do that so keep in mind the black lever extension goes on the outside of the silver lever so it's going to be furthest away from the gearing part. So I'm gonna go ahead and fish my two screws through. Secure it into place. Screw number one. And it's a tight fit, so you may actually have, a, have to kind of twist it in by hand and then use your hex key afterward to get it to go all the way through. I think that hole on that lever is threaded, which would make sense. You need that to be secure because you're gonna be disengaging and engaging the brake quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my nuts on those screws there. Should call them machine screws, button head screws, whatever you wanna call them. And yeah, they are threaded, so you, you do need to kind of keep that in mind 
And what I'm going to do is back it up to where the nut is flush on the lever for the brake and then start screwing. All right, so what I'm going to do now is grab my pliers, go in from the back, hold that nut steady and tighten up that screw. There we go. Rinse and repeat with the bottoms. And because it's threaded, you need to kind of make sure you come all the way out with that screw. Go on finger tight at first. Now, as you can imagine, this job does take a while, but at least you have this video guide to follow along with. Just making sure it's nice and tight. Now, I'm going to secure that screw around that circular bracket to make sure that's nice and tight. Make sure you don't lose that nut on the other side of the screw because it can fall out. It's not secured with anything when that screw is not in place. So, and if you haven't already guessed, the next step that I'm going to take is to rinse and repeat on the other motor. So this is actually the left motor. I apologize. Um, actually, I'm sorry. This is the right motor. We just did the left motor. And the way you could tell is if you mount it on or just like briefly put it up against the holes, you'll make sure that the lever, the brake lever is going to be in the right position, which is about right here behind this arm. And if you get the body panel back on temporarily, you don't have to screw it on. You'll know if it's in the right spot if that body panel goes on because there's a small little hole for this brake lever to fit through and it needs to be in the right position for that body panel to go on and give the clearance for that brake lever. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through this part because you already know what to expect here. So I'm just going to remove these two screws and then remove the entire bracket that holds that lever and we'll be right back with you. All right, folks, we got the brake lever on and the bracket around the motor ready to go for the right side. So now what we're going to start to do is prepare the motor with the washers and all the covers so that we can fish the bolts and the nuts through and get these motors mounted back onto the frame. So I do want to point out what the original motors look like in terms of the hardware in these three holes. So a lot of them fell off, but on this side, you could see everything's still intact. And I want to show you, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to turn my light on here for you to see a little bit better. So right here, we have a hard cap. And then underneath is a rubber cap kind of sunk into that hard cap. Not only do we have it on one side, we have it on the other side too. So there's the hard cap and there's the rubber. It's kind of like a washer, like a hard cup washer and then a rubber washer underneath that on each side. Then if you push through, you've got a hard spacer and a rubber spacer going right through that main hole. So that's what you need to make sure is on all three holes before you mount your motors back to the frame. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna push my washer or my spacer and rubber spacer through. I've got my two pieces here, the hard washer, the rubber washer. I'm gonna put one on the front, one on the back and kind of press it in there so it hopefully will lock into place and stay there or else it's gonna be kind of hard to mount it onto the frame if it doesn't wanna stay. So. Let's see what happens here. If it doesn't, I might want to just kind of leave it off. I think I'm going to do that for now. Get them ready, put them to the side, and just put the spacers through one at a time first. Then once I'm ready to mount the motor, I'll put those caps on. So there we have the hard spacer and the soft spacer on each of the three holes. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side. We don't need this right now. I'm going to prepare to mount the right side motor. Now you can see there's three holes on the frame meant for mounting your motor. And you're going to want to go ahead and get all this to go through. All right, I'm lining up the holes. So you've got hole down there, hole up here, and last but not least, a hole down there that are going to line up with these. Now remember folks, this is my first time doing it. Feel free to comment below if you think I'm doing it in a bad way. I'm always open to feedback. 
I'm going to go ahead and come through the back, put that cap on, and I'm going to put the caps on the back side first of each hole. Hopefully they will hold and then I'm going to put the front cap on the actual bolt head. I think that's going to be the best way to do it. Now keep in mind on the bolt head side, the hard washer and soft washer, there's a flat space there for some reason on the one that goes right up against the actual washer before the bolt head. So let's go ahead and make sure we do that because that's the way it came apart. And don't be frustrated if those caps don't want to stay in place. It's just the way it's got to be. Of course, these jobs can't be made too easy. So I'm going to fish this first bolt through. And once it's through, it should hold everything in place. And you're going to want to go ahead and just rinse and repeat and get this thing mounted. So I'm going to come through. And since it's not all the way connected, I've got some wiggle room here. Hopefully you have all your pieces. You didn't lose anything. Stay organized. There we go. And now I just need one more. So remember, bolt head, then washer, and then the combination of the hard cap and the soft cap before the actual spacers. But remember on the outside, you've got a little flat piece there on the hard cap. So let's go ahead and fish this one through. Want to make sure on the back side you've got your combination of the hard washer and soft washer. Remember the hard washers go on the outside and then you have your soft washer pushed up against the spacers. And now I'm going to grab my nut for each of these three. Let me show you what I'm doing here and I'm basically going to start finger tightening these nuts right onto the threaded part of the bolt and then I'll come back with my tools and tighten everything up. Making good progress here, I gotta say. Okay, just figured something else out too. We have some of these bolts are longer than others. So let's figure out which one was the short one. And I think I know it's going to be the top one facing up. So the top one is actually going to be a short bolt. So keep that in mind, folks. I apologize again. This is the first time I'm doing this. So you're going to have to bear with me. So again, on the bottom side, this is the bottom. You've got the long bolts on the top side. You see how long that threading is? That's way too long. Don't need that long of threading. So we're gonna push that back out and take the short bolt and push that through the top here. That's all we need there. And then you can put your nut on, finger tight. And I'm just gonna do everything finger tight for now and then come back and tighten. I like to do it that way just in case Never know. It also makes it easier to put things on <coughs> when everything's a little bit loose. I excuse me for the cough there. All right. So it looks like we're making good progress here. I'm going to go ahead and get the other motor on same way. Go ahead and fish the wires in there. So they kind of run through the back. And remember spacers first. So we've got on the old motor, I've got a few spacers still. Take them out, get them ready. There are my three spacers. Let's put those through first. One on the top, two on the bottom. All right. All right, and then we've got to get our washers, caps, and nuts. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and just get all my washer caps and things ready. Seat the rubber parts into the caps. Again, just so you can see up close, the caps 
have the rubber washers right underneath them. So I'm just prepping them all and getting them ready for installation. Some of these caps are gonna have a flat piece, some will not. There's that flat piece, taking my short bolt, which goes on top, and I'm gonna fish that through first. So we can go ahead and start mounting the second motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything's in the right place here. Push that bolt through. Remember to get your regular cap without the flat piece on the back side. Push that bolt head through the frame. Get your nut. I don't know if you could see that very well. I apologize. We don't have a lot of room to work with here. There we go. Finger tight, finger tight. All right. So we're in finger tight there. We're going to get this next cap long bolt head with everything already prepped. Saves time. We're going to push that through and get those bottom holes mounted in. All right, let's see here. Now remember, I got to, before you fish it through the frame, stick that cap in because it doesn't seem to want to stick. So it's going to save you a lot of time and headache if you just wait. So let me just show you what I mean. Bolt, combination of the hard cap, soft cap, fish your bolts through the bottom holes before going through the frame, stick that piece on. Now fish it through the frame. And you want to keep everything lined up. There it is. There it is, it's poking through. Get your nuts. And apply a little pressure because that motor's starting to swing a little bit with gravity taking over. Lock it in, finger tight. Get the top one, same thing. And at this point, it looks like we're ready to start tightening. Now, what I was telling you before is if you're not sure about the orientation of the motors, okay, you want to make sure that they're on the right way. So if you grab, if you grab your shroud, okay, and you see those two screw holes line up with the two screw holes right there. So you're going to place it on. You want to make sure that those levers, these yellow levers are in the right place. So those are the brake levers line up the screw holes and you can kind of see, oh, okay, well, the, the brake levers are in the right place. You got the motors in the right place. Okay. So that's really important guys. So double check to make sure your motors are going in the right way. I don't believe you can put them in the wrong way, but I did want to share that with you. So at this point, I'm confident enough to start tightening my nuts and bolts. All right, folks, so not a lot to it here. We don't have a lot of room to work with. So do what you gotta do to get your bolt heads tightened up. That's basically all that we have left here. And you may need to use a real small bolt head or a pair of pliers. I'm using a smaller um, quarter inch socket driver and one slightly bigger for the outside here. You do want to make sure these are nice and tight because there's going to be a lot of shaking and vibrating going on here. This is definitely going to be a point of high vibration and activity. You want to make sure everything is nice and tight here. Try not to uh, leave anything loose in this part of the process. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through the last part here. We're just gonna tighten up, like I said, the nuts and the bolts here. Make sure everything is nice and tight. By the way, folks, I think the right tool for this job would be to use a monkey wrench to get in there. Um, just having that monkey wrench might be a little bit easier to get in there. 
So I'm gonna use my monkey wrench for the inside, which is barely have any room and tighten up with the socket wrench on the outside. All right, much better. On the bottom side, you don't really need a monkey wrench, but got it out and why not? Could use that for the job. You wanna make sure your, your pieces here are sitting and seating properly. The rubber pieces, you wanna make sure they're seated properly in the metal caps. So if you notice that they're coming out, take the time to do it right. Readjust those rubber pieces if they're sticking out because what's gonna happen is the metal cap might cut into them and then you'll be metal on metal. You don't want that. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are done putting the new motors on. We just need to secure the wires now to the frame in the same orientation using the wire harness from before. And that is really, really important. So I'm gonna defer back to my pictures that I took to make sure that I got them in and secure the same exact way. All right, folks, so I got my picture here and that is key to figuring out how the wiring should go back as far as how the zip ties are strapped to the frame with the wires. So I'm gonna to refer to this and make sure to wire back up my uh, wires and the main harness correctly. All right, so I do know that we had a right electromagnetic brake, left electromagnetic brake labeled here. So I've got the left label here. It's the only two wire connector and that's gonna to go to my left motor. So that's this one. And then for right brake, we're gonna go ahead and grab the right motor single or two, two wire connector. And that's that. And then the other two go to the lights on the body panel. If you remember, there were some lights. So I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'm gonna get my zip ties. All right, folks, so I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure you put your wiring back together and zip tie it back together the way it was. Uh, it's very tight fit and your wires are not gonna be able to extend where they need to if you don't have them set up correctly. Okay, folks, so make sure you're doing everything by the book here. Um, there are, I believe, two points at which your connections should be zip tied. So make sure you do it correctly. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this and we'll be right back with you. All right, folks, there we have it. The wires are back. I'm just gonna go ahead and trim the excess piece of the wires and we are good to go. All right, folks, so like I mentioned, we do need to change the controllers. The controllers are under this body panel here, the floorboard. So I already started the process, but I wanna show you, you do just peel back these little rubber mats first. Okay, they pop out. It takes a little bit of strength, just pop them out and basically, um, you're going to need to take out a total of six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws. You'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm going to show you where those screws are. All right, so the first three screws, you're going to have one, two, three. So three on the right side battery compartment, and then three on the left side battery compartment. You're also going to have seven, eight, nine, ten. So you'll go ahead and loosen these up. I've already loosened them up. I've taken them out pretty much all the way, but I'm just showing you with my screwdriver where they are. And again, it's gonna be a total of 10. Once you have all those 10 uh, screws out, you can begin to lift out the plate. You will want to make sure that your battery strap is completely loose. So you'll wanna loosen up that battery strap as much as possible. And this part just kind of slides out Okay, and basically at this point, you can loosen up the battery strap enough to do the job. But what I recommend 
is just completely remove the battery strap altogether, okay? So once you remove the battery strap, you could just take this piece completely out of the way. And that's what I'm gonna do. Now, don't lose your screws. I just had all my screws start to fall out. Don't make the same mistake I just did. There are your three screws in the battery compartment. And basically, you're gonna go ahead and expose the controllers. Okay, so there are your controllers. Let's see if I could set that to the side. All right, so there are our controllers. Now the controllers come out pretty easy. There's just a nut and a bolt, and a nut and a bolt underneath the frame, there's a screw. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this um, battery strap all the way so that I can take this uh, floorboard completely out of the way. There we go. Much better. All right, folks, so as mentioned, um, you will need to basically get underneath with a screwdriver and loosen up those bolts. So let me show you here what I'm saying, what I'm talking about. I'm gonna lower this handlebar assembly all the way down. I'm gonna try and make as much room as we can so that we can get this job done while showing you what we're talking about here. So there are the screws, one, two, one, two. Let's get her done. All right, so I'm gonna use my Phillips head. Now keep in mind, on the back side, you will need to hold the nuts. There's two nuts, one for each controller. Now for this job, you can use a drill, just make sure you torque it down. They are some uh, long bolts, long screws, I should say. Now I know you can't really see what's going on here and I'm gonna show you in just a second, but basically there is a washer and a nut on the other side. So I'm pulling the screws out and I'll go ahead and loosen up the bottom ones and then turn it over before taking the screws out to show you what happens. You don't want anything to fall, that's why it's important to have a really big table or a workbench that way you don't lose anything. All right, so let's go ahead and turn this bad boy over and we'll show you what we're talking about, what we're working with on the other side here. All right, so you have a little nut and a little bolt for each one right here a little washer make sure you don't lose that okay you can technically just pop it right out once that nuts out just don't lose any of those little washers there we go so now we have both controllers exposed nice uh little dynamic controllers here all right, so we've got our new controllers. I'm gonna get them out of the box. All right, folks, so we got our new controllers here. And it's really just as simple as taking out the old connections and putting the new ones right in. So what you wanna do is pop it out, pop out the old connectors, and just put in the new ones. I like to kinda of do them in order, so that way I don't get anything mixed up. Definitely don't want to have a negative going into a positive and a positive going into a negative. And I just skipped over one. 
moving too quick. Don't want to do that. So we're reconnecting all the connectors here one at a time for the battery, positive, negative, the motor, positive and the negative. And it's really just that simple. Now I do like to give it a little tug test, make sure they're in firm. These connectors with the clips don't have to really, really worry about pushing them in firmly because they have clips that secure them into place. So that part's a little easier. And you just want to make sure they all go in the same exact way. That's the key thing here. So we got the right side controller already in. Voila. Old. Let's get the left side controller. Comes with these wire um, holders, but you don't really need them. It's a lot easier to just use the old ones. And let's go ahead and rinse and repeat here for the other side. So at this point, you know, the next steps would be to secure your screws. And I think there's enough room to kind of just tilt a little bit and kind of put the screw underneath, push it through. It looks like there is. And basically just put your, um, both, you're going to have to put both screws in actually. So it might be a little challenging to do so. Um, if, for the sake of this video, I'm going to do it this way because I want you guys to see what's going on, but um, I'm going to do a little something nifty here. I'm going to put this nut on to kind of hold it in place for a second so it doesn't fall through. And then... Put the cover on so hopefully that'll work i don't know we'll see um, probably what i'll want to do is put something underneath to kind of just push up against those screws i'm going to take what i have within reach which is a sponge about the same size so that the screw does not fall all the way down got to be resourceful folks all right so here uh, we have the cover and that cover, what I like to do is kind of push this holder of, the, of all the wires out of the way a little bit and then you can kind of shimmy it into place. You don't really need it to fit perfectly in right away. All right, so let's see if we can get that. Oh, let me get that nut off. Push this head through on both ends. See if we can get this to work. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. And with a little bit of luck, it worked. Now it looks like there's two washers for each head. Probably a little bit of a spacing issue to account for there. That's just gonna get it to hold in place. And now I'm gonna do the other side properly and tilt the unit over so we can tighten it afterwards. So I'm gonna back up the camera. I do need a little bit of room to get that done. So let's go ahead and get this done here. I'm gonna line up the screw holes, get that one in, get this one in. On the other side, I'm gonna to have to put the cover on and then I'm gonna to have to put the washers and the nuts on. All right, folks, so what I'm doing is just putting the washers and the nuts on the threaded parts of the screws. I know you can't see that, but that's what I'm doing, trust me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold the nuts on the backside with these uh, needle nose pliers and tighten up the covers that hold the controller in place. And we're pretty much done with the job as far as the actual replacement components. And, you know, then we just need to put the shroud covers back on. But what I'm probably going to do is connect the batteries and test it out before I go securing 
the cosmetic parts. In fact, I should probably just do that right now, but it's too late. I've already committed to tightening up the controller covers, so I'm just gonna commit and do that part all the way now. I'm hard-headed, what can I tell you guys? All right, there we go, all done. Time to put this baby back together without the body panels and see if she runs. All right, folks, excuse the mess, but um, you know, I do a lot of projects in my garage. I'm constantly working on the property here and doing all kinds of modifications and fun stuff. So sorry, but not really sorry. I'm gonna just go ahead and take the time to test this thing out before I finish putting everything together because the last thing I want is for it not to work and then I'm gonna have to go through the hassle of putting everything back together again when, uh, when it's not working. So I don't know, I just call me not as confident, but I don't like to secure everything without testing it first. So we're not going to put the panels all the way back on. I'm going to drop the batteries in, turn it on, make sure it works. Here's battery number one. Just sits there on the left side. Battery number two. There's no orientation that you really have to follow. You just kind of plug it in. There's only one way to plug it in. All right, so got our connectors here and I'll give you a little close up shot afterwards to show you how this thing connects. But everything's numbered. Two batteries go into the front two ports and then you've got your motor connectors here. Um, so you'll want to go ahead and make sure that you're plugging in the one on the right is supposed to be number one. The one on the left is supposed to be number two. And your main wire harness goes right in number three. Let's see if it doesn't blow up. <laughs> All right, so we're in. No beep codes. Seems to be working. Turning the wheel all the way should engage the back two wheels to go in the opposite direction, which it is doing. I do have really slippery floors. So it's like trying to, but it doesn't have the traction it needs. All right, so it is working the way it's supposed to be. Okay, guys, so I wanna show you real quick what I was talking about. So with the battery connections, um, you've got two harness connectors coming from the positive and the negative, one for each battery. So you just literally pull out the one Five goes to five, four goes to four. And these are the two battery harnesses, that's it. Now the main harness for the controller is number three. So once I take this out, you'll see what I'm talking about. You see the labels there? Nice and neat, tells you what to do. Left motor is pointing with number one to the left. And that's, you know, pretty obvious. So. Look at the wire, make sure left motor is going to the left side or right motor is going to the right side and it just plugs, pulls out. There's nothing to it, okay? So it's all color coded, can't really mess it up. Um, if you do plug the right motor into the left plug, it's not gonna break it. It's just not gonna work when you turn. It's not gonna turn how it's supposed to. So if it's not turning properly, switch the two motors, which are the red and the green connectors, okay? Now you can detach the front half from the left half. I'll show you how to do that now. 
All right, so detaching the front half from the rear half is pretty easy. You would help yourself out a lot by reducing the weight and taking out the batteries. These are pretty heavy batteries. These are lead acid batteries. They're gonna weigh considerable amount. So do that first. And then what you do is you pull up on this lever with your other hand, grab the seat post, pick up and push forward with both hands. And there you have it. That's it. Pretty easy to do. All right, folks. So at this point, we're going to get ready to put everything back together. Nothing really to it here. Just want to make sure that you um, kind of take all the steps that you took when you took the body panels off and just, well, you guessed it, do it in reverse. So remember, you've got your two rear light connectors. Okay. Here's the right side. Here's the left side. They're labeled. So when you're putting it on, you could kind of rest it on, get those brake levers to go through the slits there, and then come in from behind. There is enough room to kind of get your hands in there. Um, not a lot. So if you have somebody in the house that can help you with smaller hands, uh, I'd recommend it. All right. So that's good to go. And basically what I'm gonna do first is get those two back screws mounted. Okay, look for the screw holes on the frame. Line them up and get my two screws. Sorry, my head, my big head's in the way there. There we go. First one is in. We are on our way home. That is nice when you have a big repair job and you get it done and everything goes good. Nothing blows up. It's a great feeling, folks. All right, so we are just about ready to move on to the forward front side rather. Sorry folks, my camera seemed to have died, but I secured the last two screws on the back um, and on the, uh, the rear side and on the front side of the rear. So we got two there, two there, and that's all there is to it as far as securing the body panel back to the frame. So let's go ahead and move forward with the front side of the frame. All right, folks, so I am gonna go ahead and secure the footboard back to the frame. There's not much to it here. Remember, we've got one, two, three, four screws that we need to secure on the front part. All right, one little tip, guys. I would recommend not securing all the screws all the way down. Kind of get them in loose at first, just get the screws going through the threading on all of them and then come back and tighten them all one at a time. Otherwise, um, you'll see that the body panel, the, the, the whole panel that we're installing right now tends to flex and shift and the screw holes end up not lining up the way you want them to. Um, it is kind of a, a plastic, so you know that can happen. So once you get them all in, it, it makes it a lot easier to go back and just tighten them all. I would do like a star pattern. So I'm tightening this one in the back corner, then I'm gonna move to the front right, or to the front left. All right, folks, so what I'm doing now is just getting the battery strap on. Not much to it here. Just gonna wanna go ahead and fish it through. Get your strap to go back through. Of course, I usually always get these wrong the first time, but I think I got it right this time. So when you get it like that, you should be able to pull back and it's gonna kind of tighten itself up. Uh, nope, it's not getting tight on its own. So let's see if we go the other direction, it should. And we are just about done. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this video. And if you're not, let me know what I could have done differently. All right, let's bring this down. 
Oh, one more thing. We need to reinsert the floor uh, foot kind of ergonomic foot uh, pads, if you will. They just pop right in, there's, there's nothing to it. So, you know, they're only gonna go in one way properly. Push down, there's these little nipples that go into the holes there. And they're only gonna fit one, rip one way. No wrong way to do it. Okay, so that goes like that. It's all gonna line up the pattern of the Outline of the floorboard is going to line up the way it should. I'm going to push all those little nipples there through, and we're good to go. Let's put it back together, and we're done. All right, folks, well, we did it. I really appreciate you staying tuned to the very end. It means a lot. Thank you for supporting our YouTube channel. If you need parts, or you need any kind of uh, mobility equipment, scooters, power chairs, lift chair recliners, ramps, we'd love to earn your business. We offer tax-free sales, free shipping nationwide here at mobilitydirect.com. Again, I'm Sergio with Mobility Direct. Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our playlist. We have tons of repair videos. We have in-depth review videos, torture testing videos, entertainment videos, awesome videos. We have the industry's leading YouTube channel. So check it out. You're not going to be disappointed. Till next time, everybody. Have a great day.